the JAMA Network. Getting ready to do a transcutaneous approach to a skin muscle flap lower lid blepharoplasty. The most common way that I perform lower lid cosmetic blepharoplasty. Incision is marked and made two to four millimeters below the ciliary margin, extends out about eight millimeters lateral to the lateral canthus. I'm taking a curved sharp iris scissors, making a tunnel through the orbicularis, getting underneath the orbicularis so I can see the orbital septum. Once I've done that, I have a outward beveled K dissecting scissors, I call them my eyelid scissors, and I just easily elevate that plane between the orbicularis and the septum. I take the curved iris scissors and separate the skin from the pretarsal orbicularis before I bevel cut the muscle, reflecting the skin muscle flap and extend it out laterally. It's easy to see the orbital septum and the fat. I identify the lateral fat pocket and make a horizontal incision in the orbital septum, trying not to excise any orbital septum laterally, and tease out the fat in the lateral compartment. Separate the septum from the fat, use a bipolar cautery, control hemostasis, and specifically to meticulously cauterize the stalk of the fat before excising it. This way no vessels retract into the orbit. After the lateral fat pocket, I gently push on the globe, identify the medial fat pocket. As you can see easily, snip a minor amount of orbital septum, tease out the fat, and then again cauterize it at the level of the inferior orbital rim and remove it. Now I identify the nasal or medial compartment, it's paler fat as you can see, cauterize the stalk of the fat before excising it. Now I have my assistant put a finger down the melolabial mound or nasal labial fold creating some tension down on the skin flap just as though the mouth was open or the person was looking out. This is a patient under general anesthesia going to have a facelift. I'm redraping the skin and when I do that I want to pick up the lower lid, make sure it's not tethered it's up onto the lower limbus, redraping the skin muscle flap into the relative concavity when the patient's supine, and then incrementally trim, make a back, back cut, and I'm incrementally going to excise this skin. This is a 70 proline, just temporarily holding the flap in position. Now I'm going to excise the lateral triangle. On this side I use a blade to cut through the skin. And the Stevens, like scissors, which is also a sharp stitch scissor, trimming the skin and muscle that's redundant laterally and then completing this now longer triangular excision of skin with literally no tension on the lower lid while I'm excising it. I'm cutting it in a beveled fashion so as to uh, remove some of the redundant or overlapping orbicularis. Sometimes I actually trim extra orbicularis. This patient has pretty thin orbicularis, but that's how I would do a trim it secondarily if it was thickened or hypertrophied. I have an intact pretarsal orbicularis sling left over. The fat's removed at the level of the orbital rim. The flap is then redraped. You see there's just a tiny bit of gapping laterally, no tension on the lower lid in the middle aspect. But now I'm going to support the skin muscle flap with a 5 monocryl suture, place the periosteum at the lateral tubercle. It's a very firm attachment as you can see, and I grasp the orbicularis muscle suture it right down to that lateral orbital tubercle periosteum. Great support to the lower lid 
no tension, again, the middle portion of the lid or in that part of the skin flap. The rest of the orbicularis is then approximated with a 6-0 polyzorb suture just to revert the muscle in that lateral aspect. good approximation is done. You could almost not suture it, but I evert the lateral aspect with interrupted 7-0 blue proline sutures. I close the remainder of the lower eyelid transcutaneous incision with a running fast absorbing 6-0 plain gut suture. This could almost be glued, but in a skin muscle flap sometimes there's a little bit of oozing and glue is just a little messy. So I use the suture. This is now a completed skin muscle flap, lower lid blepharoplasty, good support to the lower lid, and the lower lid is above the lateral limbus.